Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Also, I'm very happy to see that there is Turkish, uh, Turkish woman representation in this uh, group as well. <laughs> uh, so I would like to start off uh, with uh, uh, female employment and domestic violence in this great session. So let me start off uh, first saying the title and then move on with the motivation. So the title uh, of my um, uh, paper is Paper for Women and Domestic Violence, Evidence from Rwandan Coffee Mills. So to start off with motivation, although this uh, session does not need any motivation, is that domestic violence is a, a global health problem Specifically on the global health problem uh, margin, one in every three women worldwide have experienced either physical or sexual violence from their partners at some point in their lives. And this number is much higher uh, in the developing countries. Uh, to give an example, in Rwanda, uh, the context of the study, 49.5% of partnered women experienced domestic violence in the past 12 months as of 2010. Uh, to address this problem, address domestic violence, providing job opportunities to women is uh, widely discussed in the global policy debate. And the uh, uh, argument is as follows. The employment of women can decrease domestic violence, either via the increase in women's outside options, I mean, bargaining power, uh, and or a decrease in financial stress uh, in the household due to the increase in overall resources. Uh, yet there is limited cost Causal evidence on the literature, specifically on the effects of increased job availability uh, for women. The literature focused on the effect of cash transfers, uh, unemployment, and then the wage gap in education, as well as dowry payments, which are a bit different uh, compared to increased job availability uh, for women specifically. And there is mixed evidence from the cash transfers literature, which says that uh, the providing income to women can actually uh, decrease domestic violence as well as increasing it due to husband's increased incentives for extracting those uh, newly acquired resources as well as uh, male backlash due to uh, uh, patriarchal norms. So this uh, brings up raises the question of whether providing jobs to women will like either will be beneficial for them, uh, will protect them, uh, or maybe it can also be harmful uh, for them at the end of the day. So this brings me to my research question, which is does providing job opportunities to women decrease the violence they face uh, from their partners? To answer my research question that I will, I will be using a specific context, which is the government induced rapid expansion of coffee mills. We can think of like coffee factories where women work uh, in Rwanda in the 2000s as a natural experiment. Uh, in this context, uh, this context enables me to capture the effects of paid job availability for women, because in the context, women transition uh, from being unpaid family workers in their uh, family coffee plots, coffee farms, to wage workers uh, in the coffee factories, coffee mills, for the same uh, coffee processing tasks, same tasks as before. So with, the, uh, with this context, I will be able to identify the effects of having a job, uh, which is earnings as well as non-monetary benefits of a job, uh, like the confidence that you receive when you work and uh, basically the effects of the co-workers co on you and so on. And at, at the end of the day, the results will not be affected by like learning a new skill, given the fact that she, they're doing the same tasks as before. So basically the uh, uh, context enables me to capture the increased job availability for women. Uh, as a part of the introduction, uh, before showing the summary of the results, I would like to go over what a coffee mill is, since I will be saying that pretty much uh, throughout the presentation as well as introduction. So coffee mill is where coffee cherries, the harvest of the coffee plant, uh, a coffee tree is processed into coffee beans so that uh, it's exported to foreign countries, to uh, basically uh, Europe and uh, US basically. Uh, so the key feature of the coffee mill that provides an identification is that a, mill, a coffee mill serves coffee farmers who reside in this catchment area, a four kilometer buffer zone, this four kilometer uh, radius uh, circle uh, around the mill. The reason why there's a catchment area uh, uh, of a mill, that the, uh, the mill is a specific catchment area, is that coffee cherries will rot if not transported to a mill within a few hours of harvest. So couple X in this context, uh, basically in this uh, visualization is within the catchment area, 
but uh, the couple Y is outside of the catchment area. And like think of those couples of the coffee farmers, by the time they bring those, uh, their coffee uh, uh, produce to the mill, uh, the mill will not be accepting them. Uh, so like couple Y, like husband and the wife will not be uh, specific to the woman, will not be uh, uh, have the opportunity to work there. So basically couple X will be the, benef uh, will be the beneficiaries of the opportunities in the mill. So based on this uh, key feature, I will be using a staggered difference and differences design uh, to uh, uh, for, for my identification strategy. I will first use the spatial variation that I just go over within and outside of the catchment area. Uh, and uh, I will be also using the time variation before and after a meal opening. And for this, I will be using self-reported domestic violence and labor market outcomes. Uh, and to uh, complement these uh, main results, I, am, I will be using a difference and differences event study design using the universe of monthly hospitalizations for domestic violence in the country, which is a unique administrative data set. I will continue to be using the same spatial variation within and outside of the catchment area, but this time uh, what I will be using differently is that I will be using a monthly time variation uh, exploiting the fact that the mills open only uh, during the harvest months, uh, between uh, basically March and July uh, uh, during the year. So I will be using the beginning of the harvest season, uh, March, as the main event, so that I will be able to see within a year, specifically during the time when women are working for pay during the harvest months, I will be able to see whether there is a decline in domestic violence uh, or not when women are working for pay. Uh, to preview all the results, uh, first uh, results on self-reported domestic violence, women in the catchment area are 18% more likely to work for cash and 26% less likely to self-report domestic violence in the past 12 months. So there is a decline in domestic violence. And there is no change in the overall labor supply behavior, but what is mainly changing is they're uh, working for cash, it's basically the working for pay margin. And for the hospitals, hospitals in the catchment area are 20% less likely to have a domestic violence patient in a harvest month compared to one month before the harvest season. So there is again a decline in domestic violence and there is no change in women's non-domestic violence hospitalizations during the harvest months. The ones that is changing are specifically uh, whether the women are being a domestic violence patient or not. I also document that there is an increase in earnings both for women and the husbands. I will get to why there is an increase in husbands uh, as we go along, but basically I'm documenting an increase uh, in the household resources, both for the men and the women. So this is the first part of the paper that I will be going over in the next, uh, um, uh, the remaining minutes. But in the second part of the paper, I will be uncovering the mechanisms behind the results. And I show that the decline in domestic violence is uh, plausibly driven by women's paid employment, and there are two main channels uh, based on this uh, um, conclusion, which is the increase in women's outside options and the bargaining power, as well as women's contribution to household earnings. The increase in household earnings is the uh, two mechanisms, are the two mechanisms uh, behind this conclusion. And I also go over in detail and show that the increase in husband's earnings is not the dominant mechanism to result, uh, behind the results. So this is not just a paper on there's an increase in husband's earnings and that's the reason there's a decline in domestic violence. It's basically uh, the decline is driven by the most pain employment. So now I will jump into uh, the context and critical specification and results and mechanisms in detail. So the context is in 2002, the government adopted the national coffee strategy which aimed to shift the milk process coffee production to participate in the international specialty coffee market. International specialty coffee market is basically the coffee uh, that we see in the Starbucks, for instance, in the US, it's like the, uh, or like in other parts of the, uh, the world, it's basically the coffee that we see in Starbucks and the big coffee chains. In the early 2000s, a public-private partnership project helped farmers to establish cooperatives and build uh, meals in the communities. And after uh, the project, farmers continued to build mills across the countries uh, and a rapid expansion took place between 2005 and 2012. So this is a visualization of the um, uh, expansion uh, over the years, but on the x-axis you see the number of the years and on the y-axis you see uh, the total number of the mills. And as you can see here, 
is that there's a rapid expansion between 2005 and 2012. What is important for this expansion for women is that uh, before a, a meal opening, farmers clean coffee cherries, dry them and sort out the defectives all by hand and sell the product in the local market. And in this setup, drying and sorting are female dominated tasks and selling is a male dominated task. And by due to this context, the husband is the one who receive and control all the income from the coffee and woman does not have any personal income uh, based on this um, uh, 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 basically uh, setup. And after a meal opening, husbands sell the coffee cherries to the mill and that's, they continue to have uh, a task. Are basically cleaned by the machinery in mills and that's basically technology in the mills. Uh, uh, thanks to the, uh, basically that machine is that, that those machines are not able to dry and sort the coffees, uh, co uh, co uh, coffee cherries. Uh, basically a woman needs to uh, do the drying and sorting. Uh, basically those tasks continue to be made and those are giving the fact that they're female dominated tasks. Uh, basically uh, meals are demanding paid labor from the catchment area and, and Again, uh, due to the fact that it's a female dominated task, basically mills are demanding uh, paid labor from the woman. So it's basically opening of a mill is an opportunity for the woman to transition from being an unpaid family worker to the, uh, from their uh, uh, family farms to a paid worker, wage worker uh, in the mill. To visualize uh, basically the environment, uh, since I will be saying uh, mill uh, pretty much in the remaining uh, uh, minutes is that, so this is basically a mill environment. Uh, it's basically inside of a mill in Rwanda. And as you can see that like now women are sorting out the, uh, the coffee, these are the defectives. So this is the main task, the female dominated task that she is doing. And as you can see, all of her uh, co-workers are women, even the fact that it's a female dominated task. So this is what uh, she is uh, receiving a daily wage uh, for. So what happened to the men? I also said that there is some change uh, in the men. So for husband, there is no transition. He was already working for pay uh, from selling the coffee, uh, home processed coffee in the local market for a low price. Uh, and, she, and now he continues to work for pay and now he's selling uh, coffee cherries to the mill. So no transition for uh, paid work, but what's happening is that he is having a higher income from selling cherries to the mill since it's more profitable to sell the cherries to the mill compared to selling a, like a home processed coffee uh, in the local market. Uh, so jumping into data, I use multiple highly detailed data sets to uh, make my analysis. The first one is the data on mills, which is a geocoded universe of uh, data on uh, geocoded uh, universe of mills, which have the uh, information about the mills year of operation, which enables me to do a staggered difference and differences design since, since uh, different portions of the country uh, receive the mill in different uh, years, basically. Uh, and I complement with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, highly detailed data set on uh, variables related to uh, coffee so that I basically make sure that the um, the opening of a mill is uh, not endogenous, or I don't have any omitted variable bias. Uh, moving on to domestic violence data set, first I will be using a domestic uh, health surveys, which is a self-reported data set. And this data set is geocoded as well, which enables me uh, to match the couples, men and women, with the mill so that I will be able to see whether, uh, what is like the difference between women in the uh, catchment area and outside of the catchment area. I also have the information about like women's labor market outcomes. So, so basically this data set gives me all the self-reported outcomes that I have. I also have the individual earnings of the couples uh, with uh, a household survey. Although this data set is not geocoded due to the geographic identifiers, I still have the opportunity to understand uh, how meal exposure is affecting women's earnings and men's earnings uh, differently. So the second data set, the data set that, that makes this paper unique is the fact that I'm using both self-reported as well as novel administrative records on the universe of monthly hospitalizations in the country. Uh, this is again a geocoded data set is the first thing, first thing off, uh, giving the fact that uh, so basically the geocoded nature enables me to match the hospitals now uh, 
with the males so that I will be able to under, uh, to measure meal exposure. This is a monthly data set, which enables me uh, to um, basically uh, detect the changes in domestic violence, specifically in the months when I'm working for pay. So this is basically creating a very precise measure. And it's like a panel data set uh, that I will be able to see all of the uh, hospitals over the years. One uh, disadvantage of the data set uh, I need to be transparent with is that this is only coming from at the end of the expansion period where the number of meals are fixed. So I will be able to have the data set for only a couple of years, uh, not during the expansion period, but I still able to detect what's going on specifically during the harvest months uh, when the um, uh, when uh, with the women are working for pay. It's actually a universe of hospitalizations due to gender-based violence, but specifically I highlight, uh, I um, um, uh, uh, named outcomes for age older than 18 as domestic violence, giving the fact that majority of the women uh, older than 18 are already married in Rwanda. And as a placebo outcome, I already have the data for non-domestic violence hospitalizations. So jumping into empirical strategy, uh, which I will be uh, going briefly for the sake of time, is uh, the dependent variable is a binary variable coded as one if woman I in sector S, which is a 50 kilometer square area, and in year T worked, work for cash, and experienced domestic violence in the past 12 months. This is a classical staggered difference and differences uh, setup. And the mil ICT is the main treatment variable, which is by binary variable coded as one, if woman I in sector S and year T resides within the catchment area of a male or otherwise. So whether you're in the mill, uh, in the catchment area of a male or outside of the catchment area of a male is the main uh, treatment variable. And the beta one, the effect of being in the catchment area of a male uh, is capturing the main parameter of interest. I have a very rich um, uh, set of controls and fixed effects, uh, as well as I'm also uh, controlling for the uh, linear time trends, which for the sake of time, I will not go into detail, but it's uh, due to the richness of the data, I will be able to uh, control for, uh, control in a very granular level. Before moving on to showing the results, I would like to visualize the catchment area within the outside of the catchment area with a, a couple of maps, and I show how I, uh, create a robustness check based on that. So uh, I will always be showing uh, uh, two set of results for the start reported outcomes, which is on the left. The first one that I will be showing is, uh, the first, the treatment group will be uh, the couples within the catchment area, which is basically the circle, uh, basically the circle area. Like if we, uh, basically focus on, for instance, the triangle, the mill. These households are the treatment households. And basically the households outside of the catchment area uh, within a district, this is basically not the whole country, but the district, 800 kilometers square area. Uh, basically all of the households here are the control households. So this is the first setup, which is a within district approach uh, uh, results uh, that I will be showing. I will also be showing uh, that, um, um, a different approach, which I call a donut approach, uh, which is basically the treatment group con continues to be the same, but now the control uh, households will be just the uh, uh, households within the donut area around uh, the treatment group, the, uh, the uh, circle uh, catchment area. So basically uh, with these two approaches, uh, spoiler alert, they will, all, they will always give the same result. I will be able to show that uh, even in a different control group, uh, it's a very small control group results basically hold. So jumping into the results, on the left-hand side, you're seeing the within district approach. Uh, and on the right-hand side, uh, it is the, like, the donut approach. In both cases, uh, there is no change in overall uh, labor supply behavior when are working before and after. But what is changing is that there is an increase in working for cash upon a mill opening for women in the catchment area. And there is a decline in domestic violence in the past 12 months. So increase in women's working for cash uh, in the past 12 months, which is accompanied with decrease in domestic violence in the past 12 months. And this is self-reported outcomes. Uh, I also uh, make an analysis for the husband's employment. And I show that there is no change in the uh, uh, working for husbands, it, it's uh, as I uh, go over earlier in the context, and but like there is also no change in working for cash um, 
uh, for the men. So it's basically there is no transition for the men, and uh, both for working as well as like the working for care. So this is basically a summary of like there is no transition for men. The transition was for women. I also checked basically the earnings for uh, men and women. Last daily earnings for both uh, uh, women and men. Uh, women and their husbands specifically. And I, I'm documented that due to uh, male exposure, there is an increase in, in uh, individual last daily earnings, both for the woman and the husband. As I go, so it's basically like a testament that what, what I go over in the context section is uh, basically completely confirmed by the fact that uh, there's an increase in both the woman uh, as well as the husbands. The second set of results that I would like to go over is the, uh, based on the hospitalizations. Uh, data set. Again, uh, let's remember the fact that this data is coming males uh, are fixed. And now I will be showing what will happen uh, to the hospitals in the catchment area relative to the ones that are outside of the, uh, relative to the hospitals outside of the catchment area. So the dependent variable is now binary variable coded as one. If hospital H in district D, month M, uh, and year T has a domestic violence patient uh, and, and zero other rights. Again, let's remember the fact that this is a monthly data set. So I'm specifically capturing within a year what will happen to the domestic violence, uh, the probability of having a domestic violence patient. And mil HD is a binary variable coded as one if hospital H in district T is located within the catchment area for mil and zero other rights. So I will be showing a figure, which is uh, basically a beta for every year, every month within a year from uh, January to all the way up to December. And specifically, I will highlight whether uh, the beta is specific to during the harvest month, whether there is a decline or not. Again, I have a set of controls and specifically since this, uh, beyond, this is not a, like a repeated cross session, specifically it's like a panel data set. I will be able to use hospital fix effects, which is a, a further uh, strength of this data set as well. So jumping into visuals. So again, this is uh, basically these points are all the betas uh, within a year. And what we need to look specifically is uh, during the peak of the harvest. So there is a beginning of the harvest period. There's a peak of the harvest period uh, within a year, as well as there's like a post harvest period. Specifically, the peak of the harvest period are is uh, like the, basically the months that women, uh, the majority of the women uh, in the catchment of uh, for male are working for pay, and I see that specifically in those uh, uh, in that period is the time when we observe a decline in domestic violence. Having a domestic violence patient uh, is basically uh, decreases during the peak of the harvest when women are working for pay. There is no change in the post-harvest months, and I will get back uh, to that uh, in the mechanism section. But like as a, like a, a highlight of this figure, there is a decline in domestic violence when there is when women are working for pay. Of course, uh, it, you can say that like things maybe this is due to the fact that the opportunity cost of going to a hospital increased during the harvest months, since now if a woman does not go to a hospital, uh, that it, sorry. Uh, when a woman go to a hospital within the harvest months, now they're losing a wage for it. So it's very costly actually to go to a hospital within uh, these periods, uh, within these months. So as a placebo test, what I do is that I check, uh, I basically plot and estimate uh, uh, basically the probability of women going to a hospital, not for uh, the uh, for domestic violence cases, but for like women's mo uh, monthly hospitalizations for non-domestic violence diseases that is nothing related to domestic violence. And as you can see here, having a domestic having a non-domestic violence hospital is, uh, uh, the patient um, basically is not changing uh, within a year, which suggests the fact that it's not like women are going to hospital less. If that's the case, we need to be seeing a decline in this graph as well. So it's only the domestic violence uh, hospitalizations that we're seeing a decline in, which is again confirms the fact that there's really a decline in domestic violence irrespective of the increasing cost of going to a hospital. So up until now, oh, how many minutes do I have? We have about two minutes left. Oh, two minutes left? Oh, I get, I get super uh, slow then. Uh, so 
basically up until now, what I go over is the potential mechanisms behind the decline in domestic violence. So uh, the results, uh, uh, whether there's a decline in domestic violence or not, but I, now I'm going over the potential mechanisms. The first thing that I will be showing is that I find that making decisions on large household purchases alone or jointly uh, with the husband increased relative to the husband is making the decisions uh, uh, for them. Don't I have four minutes since we started a bit later on? Anyway, I'm continuing on. Um, it will be nice if you have answered. I'm sorry, maybe. Did, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, sorry. We you started now. Yeah, we started at 20 yeah. plus, so uh, yeah. But please go ahead three minutes more and then we have time for questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, okay. Uh, what I show is that making decisions on large household purchases alone or jointly with the husband is, uh, it's more likely to make such decisions jointly or alone with the husband relative to the husbands are making the decisions uh, uh, for them, which suggests the fact that there is an increase in women's bargaining power uh, and um, there's an increase in women's outside options. So this is the first mechanism that I provide evidence for. The majority of the domestic violence literature suggests the fact that there's an exposure reduction channel. Now women go out and work, uh, which means that there's a decline in exposure between the couple. So maybe that's driving the result. In order to uh, uh, test whether this is the case or not, I focus on a subsample where, the, uh, where there's no change in a woman's exposure to uh, their husbands. So basically, they're couples with different occupations, women in agriculture who are married to husbands uh, who are uh, working in non-agricultural manual jobs, like truck driver, construction worker, and so on. Uh, basically, uh, a mill opening is a shock to the woman's earnings, not to the couple's shared time in this, for the subsample, since for those occupation pairs, they were already not seeing each other during the day before a mill opening. And after the mill opening, women continue to work outside of the home, but now they're like a different occupation. But even for this subset of uh, couples where the, there is no change in uh, Expo uh, uh, there's no change in exposure between them. There is still a decline in domestic violence, which is very similar to the main, uh, um, uh, to the main uh, basically uh, uh, sample, which suggests the fact that the exposure reduction is not the dominant mechanism behind the results. And I also show that for that specific subsample, there is no change in husband's earnings, but there is an increase in women's earnings. There's continued to be the increase in husband's earnings which suggests the fact that uh, the increase in husband's earnings is not the dominant mechanism behind the result. I, I cannot still rule out the fact that whether the woman's bargaining power or the increase in hus household earnings uh, due to women's earnings is like driving the main results or not. But at this stage, what I'm left out with are two main channels, the increase in women's bargaining power, as well as the increase in household earnings due to women's earnings, not to the uh, husband's contribution to the household income, which suggests the fact that uh, the decline in domestic violence is plausibly driven by women's paid employment, where the increase in outside option and women's contribution to household earnings are the two, um, uh, basically the mechanisms uh, uh, um, behind this conclusion. We can get to that uh, uh, in the question section. I did uh, like a ton of robust checks. Again, we can go over uh, during the Q&A. And to conclude, this paper provides causal evidence that the rapid expansion of coffee mills in Rwanda in the 2000s first increased women's paid employment, increased women's and their husband's earnings, and it decreases uh, domestic violence. And the main conclusion uh, that I uh, highlight is that women's paid employment is plausibly driving uh, the decline in domestic violence. And the policy uh, takeaway uh, from uh, my paper is that improving the labor market opportunities for women has the potential to alleviate domestic violence in a developing country context. Thank you. I hope the last bit of is not that much rushed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. No, it was perfect time man management. And uh, I am happy to open for questions if there are questions from the room here or from the online audience. Yes, we have one question.
I am wondering if this effect uh, is uh, due to just women's increasing uh, in paid employment or both women's and their husbands. So if it was just women who had the increase in employment, wouldn't, be, wouldn't there be um, this um, uh, instrumental, instrumental violence that uh, uh, was talked about earlier? So what, what do you think about that? Uh, so two points on this. Uh, first, uh, I, I, uh, there are two. I think there are two points to the question. The first one is related to the husband's uh, income, and the second one is basically the instrumental approach. Uh, so the first one is that I also make the analysis, the subsample that I go over, which is the husbands who are uh, uh, basically the couple payers the couples where basically women are uh, working in agriculture who are uh, married to men with non-agricultural manual jobs. Uh, basically those husbands are not experiencing an increase in their earnings. So in that setup, uh, earnings, but there is no change uh, in um, uh, the husbands. And I think that I uh, skipped that in like uh, pretty uh, uh, fast. So my bad on this. For these, for this subsample, even for the subsample where there is no change in husband's earnings, I still observe a decline uh, in domestic violence. So it's basically the same subsample: women who are farmers or married to non-agricultural, who are married to men with non-agricultural manual jobs. So if we have a subsample, and in that subsample there is an increase in women's earnings, but there is no change in husband's earnings, no increase, no change at all. Uh, in uh, husband's earnings, I'm still observing a decline in domestic violence, which is very similar to um, uh, uh, basically um, um, very similar to the overall um, effect that I observe. So this suggests the fact that the husband's increase in husband's earnings is not the main mechanism, main driver of the results. Uh, so in the for going back to the instrumental. Uh, so actually in the paper, I have a model which incorporate both different types of uh, domestic violence, instrumental uh, as well as uh, basically expressive motto, which I uh, summarize as uh, the effect of income on domestic violence. But I have the instrumental approach where uh, I have a prediction on, uh, I allow for the fact that there are different types of uh, domestic violence. And I try to understand what happens, let's say if there's both instrumental approach or like different approaches um, uh, basically in, uh, in the interaction between the uh, husband and the man, husband and the wife. And I basically write a prediction of like, uh, if women are working for pay, uh, basically uh, how this is affecting the domestic violence in the household. According to a prediction, it suggests the fact that if the woman's earnings are high enough, which means that if the woman's outside option and the bargaining power is high enough, at the end of the day, the effect of women having earnings uh, dominates. And basically, I do not have, I'm, I'm not observing the fact that the instrumental or the extractive motive of the husband uh, is not deriving an increase in domestic violence originally. But what I also find in the model is that if the woman's earnings is not that high enough, uh, and the woman does not have that much of like a, a outside option. I also observe the fact that the extractive motive of the husband is motivating and there will be an increase in domestic violence. Uh, but like, uh, you can also check the model for detail, but like I allow uh, for uh, different type of motives, specifically instrumental uh, in the paper, in the model. And that basically the theory predicts that if the women's are uh, um, if the earning of the uh, woman are like high enough, if the woman's also adoption is high enough, and specifically due to the fact that it's high enough, it's also affecting an increase, it's also creating an increase in the household earnings, which is creating an income effect. Now they're enjoying more resources. In those cases, I will be seeing a decline in domestic violence, but I also need to highlight the fact that I'm not ruling out that such a motive is, uh, I'm allowing for that motive to happen, but according to my results, uh, the effect of the job is I seeing is basically creating a decline, although I'm not saying that I'm not ruling out that motive. Thank you so much, Dennis. We